been said more than once. Certainly feel the Spirit already here this morning. The Lord is good to us, folks. We just got to do the best we can do to be good to Him. You know, and that's the, that's the thing. You know, the, the Scriptures this morning, very old Scriptures. A lot of us has read them a hundred of times. Most of you can probably recite them. If you want to go ahead and turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to start reading with the 17th verse this morning. It's talking about before and after you saved, what we're supposed to be doing. The life we once lived when we were out in this world as a sinner, when we get saved, when we become a born again child of God, we're a brand new creature in Christ, and we're supposed to act that way. We're supposed to do the things that we claim that we receive from Jesus Christ. And that's a, a brand new body, a brand new life, a brand new soul, a, a hope and a home in heaven someday. And we're supposed to be rejoicing with that. And, 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 and you know, a few Sundays ago, the Lord gave us a message about being happy, being happy Christian, letting people know that you're, you're glad, that you're happy to be a child of God. You get excited about going to a ball game. You get excited about going on vacation. You know, if you like me, you get excited about going out and eat sometime. You know, we need to be excited about being a child of God. And we need to let it show every day in the life we live. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not after as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with great greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus, ye put off concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye be put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for being here this morning. Lord, not just us, but you, dear Heavenly Father, for what we feel already. Lord, I could go home right now and be content and be satisfied knowing that you was here this morning. But Lord, now as you give us these scriptures, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, open them up to us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to receive the words that it is you have for us. And Lord, let us uh, keep our minds on, on the service this morning, Lord, and not what's going on out in this old mean world right now today. Lord, help us to grow strength in your word this morning. Help us to take it with us and live it each and every day. Lord, and most importantly, if there be another here this morning, one that has a need in any way, that they just bring it to this altar, Lord. Don't wait to a time of invitation. And that time is now, Lord, when you knock on our heart's door. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. We ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about, right here, it says, put off the old ways. The old man is gone. It also talks about, be aware of vain traditions. Folks, that's things that's not lining up with God's word is what it's talking about. But if you really think about the life that we're living in today, we need to kind of go back to some of the older traditions. 
We need to go back to some of the older ways of life where right was right and wrong was wrong. It don't matter how many times you voted on it. don't matter how many people decided they liked it. Right was always right and wrong was always wrong. Our opinion did not matter because they followed God's word. Everything they did, they lined up. Yeah, not everybody. There's only ever been one perfect man ever walked this earth, folks, and that was Jesus Christ himself. We're all going to struggle. We're all going to stumble. We're all going to have our problems. But it's when we do it deliberately, that's when we need to self-check our own self and wonder, you know, am I where I need to be? If I'm doing these things, am I really feeling the conviction? Am I really feeling the remorse that I need to be? Think about the world we're living in. Think about all this junk that's going on, all the rioting, all the meanness, all the tearing up that's going on. Folks, we need to be letting Jesus shine through us more than we ever have in our entire lives. It says we need to put it off, don't it? And don't follow the things of the world. At verse 17, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not after, as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their man. We're not supposed to be doing what everybody else does, are we? Unless they're following the Lord. We need to be a following the good examples of the people that's out in this world. Yes, folks, there are some good people in this world still. There really are. Look around in this room right here. Look around in the other churches that's having services this morning. And there's a lot of good folks that's still scared to get out. They're sitting at home, you know, watching and listening to God's Word on TV, radio, however they can get it. But they are still a lot of good people that we can follow the example of. But there are so many mean ones out there. So many people that are deceiving our children children, deceiving the adults and the, the, the ones that are claiming to be adults, these young adults, they're just going about their business just following along with the crowd. Don't really have a meaning. Don't really have a, a, a nothing to prove. they just kind of going along with the crowd because it looks cool at the time. But I'm going to tell you what, folks, being cool ain't going to get you to heaven. Being a strong man ain't going to get you to heaven. Being a beautiful woman is not going to get you to heaven. The only thing that's going to get you to heaven is following Jesus Christ and accepting him as your Lord and Savior. And we have to do what's right. It's like these scriptures said. We've got to put off that old person we used to be. When we come from where we're praying and asking for forgiveness, we're a brand new person in Christ. We need to live that person each and every day to show that Jesus is real. People look at me, and I've said it before, the first church I ever pastored. <laughs> A sign was right on the sign of 195, and it said Pastor Darren Reynolds. Hey, if people, they almost wrecks when they seen my name as pastor beside of it. You know, no, I wasn't no just real bad person, but I was not living for the Lord, and people knew that. And when they saw that I was pastor in a church, you know, it was just a great example. That's what I used to tell them. I said, folks, if y'all think it was that bad, and the Lord has put me where he is now, just think what he can do for you. Think about it. Think about it. No, I'm not proud of my past. Not at all. The only time I ever talk about it is when I use it for an example is how grateful I am that the Lord had mercy on me. He had mercy on me. Folks, he has mercy on you all too or you wouldn't be here this morning. We need to be a following his word and not what the world's doing. And like 18 says, it says, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves into, over unto lasciviousness to work of uncleanness and greediness. What can I get? Who cares who I hurt? That's the thoughts of a lot of the people in this world today. It don't matter who I hurt getting there. I want all I can have. What was Jesus doing when he walked? He didn't have nothing, did he? The clothes on his back and the shoes on his feet is all Jesus Christ ever had here on this earth. And he was content. Why? Because he knew what he had up in heaven waiting on him. Folks, we have a home waiting in heaven that we can't even imagine what it's going to be like. We have a place that we're going to live for eternity that our little old minds will blow up, I believe, if we even just got a glimpse of it right now. That's why we're going to be transformed because we right now, the way we, uh, way we stand, we can't handle it. But one day, 
one day. If we turn aside from following what the world's doing, if we turn aside from, from hey, I want to be what my buddy is, I want to be in this clique right here, well, that clique right there might lead you in the wrong direction. You've got to know what's right. How are you going to do that? By reading God's Word right here, folks. We need to read. We need to study. We need to understand. Y'all need to read and know. Am I preaching you the truth when I'm up here? Is Brother Sam preaching you the truth when, when he's up here? Are the teachers teaching us the truth on Sunday mornings and Wednesday night Bible study? Are y'all receiving the truth? The only way you'll know that is, is to read the truth. And it'll click in your mind, hey, I've heard that before. I've read that. I know it's true. And then the next step is, I'm going to live it. I'm going to do it. No matter what this old wicked world does around us, folks, when we were transformed, we, we become workers for Jesus Christ. You know, I, I think of Saul when he became the Apostle Paul. How wicked and how mean Paul, uh, Saul was. People said, well, if I walk in the church building, it's liable to cave in. I said, well, I'm assure you, if that happens, the Lord has to give us a way to build another. Just come on in anyway. We'll take that chance. If you're so scared that the building's going to cave in and it's going to cause us a financial hardship, if you walk in the building, just come on in. The Lord will provide for it. He'll take care of the damage that's made when you walk in the building. I ain't seen one fall in yet, folks. <laughs> you know, I was one of them thought the same thing. Man, alive, if I walk in that building, they ain't going to tell me what's going to happen. Other people might get hurt for what the Lord's going to punish me for the things I did. But that ain't the way he does it. It's an individual relationship. What does the Bible tell us? To work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, I can't make Cynthia be good. I can pray for her, but I can't make her. You know, Brother Sam, if you was a lost man, I can't make you get saved. I can preach the word and be a witness to you, you know, with the words I speak and the things I do and my testimony to encourage you to want the same. God's not going to do that either, folks. He's not going to force you to love him. He's not going to force you to love his son or accept him as your savior. But he's going to give you that opportunity to do so. How? Just like what these words are saying. The life we live, the choices we make are just at the utmost importance right now. You think about the way our world's going today. Who knows? It may not ever go back to what you would say normal, which are normal before all this. Was it real good to begin with? It's just steadily tapering downhill a little more and a little more each and every day. And it's just the work of the devil. And hello, if you'll look and you'll read this again, it's fulfilling the scriptures right here in this very book. You know, the things that the Lord said it's going to happen, it's coming to pass. Ready or not, here I come. Y'all remember that as a kid? You better listen, Jesus is saying that aloud right now. Ready or not, here I come. You better be ready, folks. You better be ready, because I'm going to tell you what, they ain't a hiding place made in this whole wide world nationwide that Jesus Christ and God the Father can't find you. He knows everywhere you're at. He knows everything you're thinking. He knows the words you're saying. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're looking at on your cell phone and your computer. He knows every and all things about you. He knows if you're really all in for him or you're not. Going on down these in 20, it says, But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation to the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful love. Have you ever seen people, and I may have showed this illustration, you ever seen the man that wears many hats? Be walking around with hats in his back pockets of different labels. He'll be walking down through there with that old hat, that old advertising beer. You know, walking around the edge of buddy, hey, hey, well, there's a church member, and he'll put one on, it's got a cross on it, start singing, oh, how I love Jesus. It don't work that way. Folks, you either receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and you live for him daily. Are you hatting yet? It's that simple. You know, you've accepted Jesus or you've not. You've put on the new man or you're still living in an old, old life that you lived in. You've got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, without us, with not, I don't know how to get it out strong enough this morning. Folks, you have to know 
without any doubt whatsoever in your mind when the Lord comes back that you are truly a born again child of God or you're not going to enter heaven you're going to hear the dreadful uh, scripture when it says sorry I never knew you depart from me you workers of iniquity you know their, their thing was what did, did I not you know in our days it's going to be, did I not go to church every time the doors was open I always sat and I listened to the preacher I sang songs I played music I cleaned the church I done this I done that you know I worked for the community I helped serve I done this I done everything that I was supposed to do but there's one thing you forgot you didn't accept Jesus as your savior that's going to be the glitch in it, folks. Y'all ever heard that old song, Good Old Boys Won't Make It to Heaven? Don't matter how good you are, folks. Yes, we're supposed to be great and good and do good things as Christians. But we have to accept Jesus Christ to be rewarded. You might get a pat on the back here now and again. But once he patted you on the back, it's over. It's done. It's over with. Verse 23 tells us what we need to be doing begins telling us and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on a new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness wherefore put in away lying speak every man the truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath folks we're supposed to be honest in everything we do Sometimes Cynthia said, boy, you're mean to be a preacher. I said, no, I'm just honest. You know, somebody asked me something, I'm going to tell them the truth. Sometimes it don't set so well. You know, it's like chewing on a persimmon. When, when I tell them what they, what, what they uh, don't want to hear, you know, sometimes they expect preachers to kind of tickle your ears just a little bit, you know, give you just a little bit of uh, encouragement. But yeah, we will give you encouragement, but it's going to be the truth, the scripture, the way God intended for it to come, whether it sets good or whether it sets bad with you. And that's what he wants us to do. You think about Jesus and his ministry. Well, Jesus offended several, didn't he? Offended several. It's not easy being a child of God, but the reward is unbeatable. There's nothing out there going to be any better than when we go to heaven. But we've got to speak the truth. You know, we need to tell everybody the truth. You need to be good to your neighbor. Could have said, for we are members one of another. If you are a born again child of God, you are as one in the body of Christ. You've joined together. Everybody's got a part to do. It don't matter where, what part of that body you are. All of it's important or that part of the body would not be there to begin with. We're all important in the eyes of God, from the youngest to the oldest. It don't matter, and all in between, we've all got something to do for him. It says to be angry and sin not. That's a tough one sometimes, ain't it? Boy, sometimes we let our old, 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 old tongue go to flapping before our brain goes to clicking. You ever had that happen before? Sometimes we'll get mad and we'll say stuff that we ain't supposed to be a saying. We'll act like uh, something that we ain't supposed to be uh, acting like. And here we are pretending to uh, 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 saying to be a, a born again child of God. Your actions show. You don't got to tell anybody you're a Christian. You don't have to tell anybody if you're saved or if you're a lost person. They know. A child of God, your spirits will bear witness one with another or they won't. That's where the conflict comes in the world. Folks, we're not fighting against each other. It's not this old flesh that we're fighting. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual warfare that we're fighting every single day of our life. That's just like with all these monuments and all this other stuff. Folks, that piece of stone ain't hurting nobody. It don't matter what it represents. That piece of stone ain't hurting nobody. I mean, somebody could put up one of these uh, pagan god big statues somewhere. They could put it right down there in, in, you know, in between corridor and our church. You no, know, we wouldn't like it. And no, they, you know, they probably wouldn't be nothing we could do about it. But in reality, that piece of stone right there is not going to affect us in one shape, form, matter, or anything else of what we do over here on this side of the road and worshiping God. And that's what we need to do. We need to focus on worshiping Jesus Christ. We need to focus on doing what we need to be doing every single day no matter what this world is doing around us we need to be being Christians 
We need to be honoring God. Let the world, it's going to condemn itself. It's doing a good job of that right now, folks. Don't let it bring us down with them. Yeah, we're a little bit limited in what we can do as far as when we gather in church, and, you know, and we're, we're actually taking more precautions than what we're limited to do. But we do that because we love each and every one of you here, and it's for your protection. Yes, we want to be here every service, but we want everybody to be here every service. We don't want nobody to be sick. We don't want nobody to be hurting. We don't want problems. That's why... We need to listen to that small, still voice of the Lord. We need to do what he tells us to do, and we need to let things go. In verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good that he may have to give to them that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use and edifying that it may minister grace into the hearers. Folks, we don't need to be all these crazy words. Do you know the Bible says that we're going to be held accountable for every idle word? All this nonsense and all this babbling that's going on, people just don't realize how serious it's going to be one day. They think, well, I'm going to be heard. I'm going to be cool. Hey, I got on TV. I got on the news acting just plum ridiculous the other day, but I got on TV. Hmm. There's a whole lot more than the world watching you do that stuff. Jesus Christ and God the Father are looking down upon us. And all of our actions and all the things we're doing, all these people that are trying to be uh, making self-fame, self-popularity by doing all the wrong things. Yeah, you're getting popular, all right. The devil's loving you. The devil and all his saints, oh, they're loving you. They'd be glad to keep you forever and forevermore. But it also breaks Jesus' heart to see you do that. Folks, we all, most of us here has got children that's old enough. When our children go astray, when they do things that we don't like, you know, no matter how, how good or bad, you, you know, level of bad you think it may be, they may have stole a piece of bubble gum or they may have just made a bad grade on a report card, just didn't care. We've all been disappointed at different times in our children. But that didn't stop us from loving them. Think about that for just a second. Let that sink in. We are created in the image of God. By the dust of the earth, he created us. By his very breath begins us. Do we satisfy him and do we make him happy every day? No. Bible says, a man says he don't sin. He's a liar, ain't he? And, he don't, and the truth is not in him. Because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God from time to time. But we have the mercy of Jesus Christ and the grace. We're saved by grace today, folks. That he forgives us for these things. But we cannot follow the devil. We cannot follow his ways and continue on the way this world is going. But folks, it's coming quick. You know, I made a little remark, ready or not, here I come. And I was serious with that. Folks, at any given time, it would not surprise me if we heard the trumpets and the clouds went to parting. That's how serious it is. John the Baptist was preaching. Jesus was teaching. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That was a long time ago. If it was at hand, and they were teaching and preaching to be ready, how close you are, think we are right now. I'm going to leave these last few scriptures right here, and then I'm going to close. Verse 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Folks, I have never seen it in my life 
to where people are just yang yang in at each other all day long, every day. I'm talking about family, blood families. It's just constantly just yang yang about the littlest and silliest things you can think of. People that's been friends forever for years and years and years, they just well, they just turn their back on one another. Well, I'm just tired of hearing it and I ain't messing with it. Folk, that is exactly what the devil is wanting this world to do. He's wanting to separate us. Folks, they strength and they power in the prayer that uh, people that wants to pray and are close to Jesus Christ. There's power in these things. And the, the old devil, he's trying to use any and everything he can to try to tear that down and tear it apart. Folks, we've got to stand strong on the Word of God. Right now, today, you need to make a vow to yourself and to the Lord that you're going to stand stronger in the Word than what you did when you come in here this morning. We need to get back to praying in our home. We need to get back to reading God's Word in our home. We need to get back to asking His God in every and all thing that we do each and every day. And I promise you, it, it may not get a whole lot better while it's here on this earth, but He's going to get tired of it and He's going to call us home. Then I promise you it's going to be better. Stand with me this morning. Folks, if you need to pray, if you want to be closer to the Lord this morning, come on. I done told you, I don't care about this six foot social distancing. You want to come and pray? You come on and pray. We're going to pray. We're going to put hands on you and we're going to pray with you this morning. You just come on and be obedient to the Lord this morning. Y'all go ahead when you're Amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch love
need to be a praising Him. We need to be a worshiping Him. Folks, and we need to be praying one another. That's the most wonderful place we could ever be right now. Is on our knees praying to God. Seeking His face. Seeking His guidance. And asking Him, Lord, what do you need me to do? What can I do to make things better?